All right, class, continuing on with our uh, foray into R here, we're going to be talking a little bit about data structures. Uh, got Isaac uh, helping me out again. So uh, let's start here with some data structure uh, exploration. Okay, so R has multiple data structures, and all data structures are, are ways to just that structure your data. Um, different packages that you use are going to call in um, data from different structures, um, and that is just based on those functions or those packages that you use you need to have it ordered in a way that it knows where to pull things and not get confused. Um, so let's start off here um, by just uh, creating a uh, note that we're working on data structures and this will make more sense as we get into the examples here. Um, so let's start off by creating a variable um, called months and we're going to create an array uh, within that variable and in that array is going to be a collection of all the months. So January, uh, February, March, April, May, June, uh, July, is July J U L or J L Y? I think that's right, J U L. Uh, August, as you can tell, help me out on these things, you make me look, make me look stupid. Uh, September, oops. October. Oh, I can't enter. Things are going swell, crew. Uh, November, and then finally December. Okay. Um, and so within this array, we have to uh, call our second function. So if we were to do uh, the question mark uh, for array, uh, you see we have the data. Um, which is our collection of months here. And then we have our dimension length. Um, so we're going to say our dimensions are a collection of uh, three, three, two. And then we're gonna close off our function. Um, so as you can see on the left side here, I have one, two, three parentheses. Uh, and then on the right side, I have one, two, three. So this should run. Oh, I have too many. Oh, I'm missing one here. So see, when it gives you this plus sign down at the bottom, uh, what that means is um, you don't have a fully closed parenthesis. And I should have noticed too, because it says unmatched opening bracket. Um, so if I hit escape, it'll get me out of this plus sign. If I put one more bracket right there and hit run, uh, cannot be of length zero. Oh, so I forgot an argument here. Um, so, oh, I'm looking at the wrong line here. Our dimensions are going to be three, four. So it's a three by four uh, array. So I'll change that three, three, four, whatever I have to three, four. All right, run. Ah, Isaac. Um, So this is going to be part of uh, your our experience is figuring out why uh, troubleshooting, I should say, why your code doesn't work. So let me double check this. Up, oh, let's change this dimensions equals. Get rid of that. So dimensions equals C three four. There we go, finally. All right, um, so we saved that uh, months. As you can see, it's up here in uh, data, and we can see it's a matrix, um, and it's got 12 entries. So now let's call months and hit run. Okay, so now as you can see, we have three rows, which when we called our dimension three, four, we have three rows and we have four columns. 
and it put these in order January, February, March. So it fills the first column, then the second column, the third column, then the fourth column. So that's an array. So instead of storing it um, as, let's just store this as a variable. So if we say um, months one, and we're just going to store, we're just going to copy this and paste this here. So we say months one is this. And now if we print months one, you see that it's just a list and there's no structure to it, right? And so the structure uh, comes from us using the function array to put it into almost like a spreadsheet format as opposed to just, you know, a list like this. Um, so I forgot to enter my code. It's important that we always annotate our code. Um, so we'll say let's start with the array function uh, and compare it to the um, simple list function. Okay. Okay, so uh, that is an array. Um, so let's now look So we're going to do um, months, oh actually before we do this I want to show you one more thing, so I'm going to go up here. Um, so let's pull from months, um, kind of like we did before, um, where we're going to pull certain entries. So we're just going to pull entries 2, 3 from uh, months. So as you can see that, what that does is gives us the return value of August. And so August, if we were to go uh, down to, and then over three, that gives us August, right? So it says go down to, go over three, and tell us what's in that position, August. Okay, so let's look at a matrix score here. Um, so let's do months two, since we have months one as a list, and months zero, or just months as our array. And we'll say matrix, and then we'll say what the data is. And that is, I'm just going to copy and paste this uh, line here so that you're watching me fumble around trying to type it out. Um, and then we're going to say the dimensions are equal to C, we're going to do 3, 3, 2. And we'll close that off and we will run that. Error, dim names must be a list. Okay, so, um, oops, let's try, oh, I'm calling the wrong arguments again. See, this is where it could be uh, wise for me to do uh, this beforehand, right? So our argument is data, then the number of rows, and the number of columns. So, n row equals three, n column equals Four, right so this has got to be a multiple where it equals uh, the total number of entries here right so three times four is twelve there's twelve months in a year so now if I were to run it we have months two and so we can do months uh, let's call it like this um, like I said you can use the print function if you want to and as you can see uh, we have something very similar where we have uh, two by two uh, layout. However, uh, with matrices, um, you can also have 3D uh, um, data sets, right? So you can have more dimensions uh, than you can with an array. Um, as you can see, matrix uh, works very similar to array. Um, now let's look at. Um, Excuse me, you can't have uh, 3D. Arrays you can have 3D, so we're going to make a 3D array. Matrix, only 2D. Isaac, this is going off the rails. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. Array. Uh, making a 3D array. 
All right. So we're going to call this one Array 3D. You know, my creativity is off the charts uh, for these uh, variable names, right? All right. So our array is going to be uh, just even numbers. So we're going to do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, oops, yep, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, uh, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. Okay. I'm sure you would not have wanted me to sit down and type something harder than numbers uh, because you saw my typing skills earlier. All right, so um, we're now going to put our dimensions. So uh, I got ahead of myself. So our dimensions, because this is 3D, we need you know X, Y, and Z. Um, so we're going to say our dimensions are 3, 3, 2. And just like with the matrix above, um, we have to make sure that the number of entries we have here, um, let's make sure we put this parenthesis in there. Uh, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 variables. So we need to make sure our dimensions match the number of variables. So 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, which matches our uh, dimensions or the number of uh, variables that we're trying to put into this array. So we should be good to go. Hey, we've got no error this time. Beautiful. Uh, so let's print our uh, 3D array. So array, uh, so I go down here, print array 3D. So what, it's cool that you can store stuff in 3D, so you can imagine this is kind of like a two layer cube uh, right that you're storing stuff in um, but it's hard to then put that onto a two-dimensional screen right and then you know display it so what this is saying is in our first layer of our two layer three by three box uh, we have uh, two three four five ten uh, or two three four oh Going off the rails. Okay, so let's run these again real quick here. Boom. All right, so now what we're gonna do is let's call uh, or query our array. So we have array 3D, and since it's three dimensional, we're gonna have to give three coordinates. So we're going to do uh, one, three, three, two, and run. Okay, so we get 32. So as you can see, uh, for one, it's saying use row one. So it could be two, five, 14, 20, 26, or 32. Then it says find selections from column three. So it can only be then 14 or 32. And then finally it says use layer two. So we ignore layer one, which is this collection, and then we look at layer two here, and it says 32 is what we found for these coordinates right there. Okay, so moving on. Uh, let's do, uh, if you want to pull an entire row or column, So what we can do then is we do array 3D, which is the name of the array we created. And we do, oh, nope, we don't want to call another variable. We want to put brackets. And then we say we want row two, empty, one. And what this will do is it will pull three, 10, and 16. So if we look here, we're saying row two, and then we're saying all columns 
and then we're saying layer one. So row two, all columns, which is columns one, two, and three, and then only layer one. Now, if we were to get rid of this, and just say uh, pull all row two items, then you can see we get uh, three, uh, 22, 10, 28, 16, and 24, right? So we get both layer one and layer two's results as well. So I'll put that back um, and run it. Okay. Um, so that's just kind of general basics um, with some of these data structures. Um, we will move on uh, in the next lecture. We're going to talk more about data frames uh, and lists. Data frames and lists are um, a bit more uh, pertinent to our study of bioinformatics. Um, arrays and matrices are, are sometimes used, but they're a little more um, kind of sidelined compared to uh, some of the other data uh, types like uh, uh, data frames. Data frames are very important. So uh, with that, I bid you adieu. Thank you for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next lecture.